Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm going to share with you my must have tool list for every homeowner. So, I got to thinking about this during last week's video and blog post. I talked about a good tool accessory which is a hex wrench bit adapter. It's where you, instead of using a traditional hex wrench, use one of, excuse me, I wasn't ready. Use one of these adapters here. You stick it in your drill and then you don't need a set of hex wrenches anymore. You get the job done way faster. Love these. And I thought there's a lot of tools that I'm absolutely in love with that I think every homeowner ought to have. And I should make a list because we do home inspections for a ton of first time home buyers and they need to know what they need to get. So I put together a list. Number one, you already know what this is gonna be, right? It's a flashlight. Of course, everybody needs a flashlight. In fact, that should go for homeowners or non-homeowners. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of my tool preferences here too. I am an ambassador for the Phoenix brand of flashlight, spelled F-E-N-I-X. I'm partial to their flashlights. I'm not an ambassador because they reached out to me. I'm an ambassador because I've been selling their products for a long time. I love their products. Uh, so I, I like their products, but you know what? Whatever flashlight you get, look for something that's 1000 lumens plus. Look for an LED bulb and look for a lithium ion battery. It's gonna be probably a 18650 or a 21700 battery. One of those two, it's gonna have super long life, it's gonna be super bright. We don't get in, need to get in exactly which one to get. I've, I've blogged and I've done tons of videos on flashlights, so I won't dig deep on that now, but get yourself a good flashlight. If you spend 50 bucks, you can get a really nice flashlight. Next, a drill. Everybody needs a drill. And I'm not talking about some 30 year old hand me down drill from your dad with a nickel cadmium battery that's going to last 30 seconds. Get yourself a decent drill, something with a newer modern lithium ion battery. It's going to make a world of difference. The today's drills are so much better than what you were getting way back in the day. Those batteries did not last. And you don't need to get a huge drill. I mean, I used to be all about 18 volt big drills, but today I've got, I've got a little 12 volt drill from the, from Milwaukee. Uh, it's this little guy. And I use this for just about everything around my house. I rarely need an 18 volt drill for anything. And it, it comes with these tiny little 12 volt batteries, lithium ion. It's all you need. I shouldn't say all you need. It's almost all I have ever needed. It's a great drill. And I'll talk about brands real quick here. I'm partial to Milwaukee. I mean, if Milwaukee makes it, I will buy it. That's kind of my thing. There's, there's lots of other great brands out there. I am not sponsored by Milwaukee. Wouldn't mind if I was. I'd love some free tools or something, but <laughs> I, I just love their products, that's all. So I have, I have no relationship with them. But th this, is a, this is a nice little 12 volt drill. It's a 3 8 inch chuck. And 3 8 inch, I mean, that, or the chuck size, that refers to this opening here. It will accept something as big as 3 8 of an inch on the inside here. Uh, for, for most household use, that's all you need. You don't need anything bigger. And that gets us into drill bits. Get yourself a nice drill bit set. You can buy cheap sets. Here's an example of a cheap drill bit set. It's these little black steel bits. They're super cheap. They're good for going into wood a few times. That's about it. The first time you got to drill through metal, they're probably going to dull and you're going to be frustrated. And this is, this is a very basic set going up to 3 16 of an inch. It's, or maybe, I don't know, a uh, quarter inch, goes up to quarter inch. You want to get yourself a bigger set. Get something that goes up to half inch. But wait a minute, if you've only got a 3 8 inch drill, how are you going to get a half inch bit? It's going to have a reduced shank. It's going to look like this, where the body of the bit is half inch, but then at the base, it goes down to 3 8 inch, so it'll still fit in your drill. Make sure you got something with a reduced shank. If you want to get fancy, you could buy a bit set that has hex shanks. It's going to look like this. I do like these. I don't have a full set of these, but I really ought to get a full set of these because 
if someday you decide to step it up and you add on to your tool collection, instead of just having a drill, you also get an impact driver. This thing, I, I'll be honest, I use my impact driver way more than I use my drill. And when you've got these hex shank drill bits, you can actually use those in your impact driver too. Works just fine. So, I don't know. If I were to just go out and buy a basic bit set, if I was trying to buy it on the cheap, I'd probably go get whatever Harbor Freight has to offer for five bucks or something. But if I wanted a set that's gonna last me a lot longer, last me a lifetime, and I'm gonna use it all the time, starting over, I would probably get a full set of hex and drill bits. So I can use them with whatever. And then of course, you need a full bit set for your drill. For, for, for driving fasteners, you want to get a set that, and you know, here's a, a very small basic set. I keep this in my kitchen. It's not my, my main set. It's going to have Phillips, several different sizes of Phillips, slotted, square drive, square heads, and also known as Robertson for the geeks out there, and then Torx which some people call star bits. You'll have a variety of all these different sizes. And you can get into a bunch of other bits that, that they kind of get obscure, but these four are gonna be the most common. You get a, a good variety of those bits and you're good to go. And also, of course, get a magnetic bit holder, something like this. This is the part that just stays in your drill. And then to quickly change the bit, you just pop it in there. And, you know, super rookie mistake, is where you take your bit and you attach your bit directly into your drill. Don't do that. It just shows you're a novice. You, <laughs> and, and it's cumbersome. Use the bit holder. While we're on that, another, another tool accessory for your drill, this, this is a huge one, is a socket wrench adapter. Now, for a traditional socket set, you're gonna have your socket wrench and then you're gonna have your, your socket head and to fasten stuff, you keep doing this with your wrench, but something that's a huge time saver is you get an adapter for your drill. And it's, it's gonna have something that fits into your socket head, and then you pop that into your drill, and now you've got a huge time saver. Love these. These are, these are a few of my can't live without adapters. I've got these everywhere. I, I, keep, I keep them in my socket set, I keep them in my tool drawer, I keep more inside my house, like I can't live without these things. So get yourself some socket adapters and that brings us to a socket set. Get yourself a good socket set. The two most traditional, or the most common sizes for socket sets, sizes are gonna to refer to the size of the socket wrench. It's gonna be this little guy right here. This is a 3 8 inch, that's it's surely the most common. A little bit smaller is a quarter inch, a little bit bigger is a half inch. I don't think you need to get it in the half inch range unless you're doing some serious mechanic cranking like you're working on cars or, or small engines. Maybe then you want to step it up to a bigger one, but for most household jobs, getting a quarter, dri quarter inch drive and three eighths inch drive socket set is going to be sufficient. Get a full set of standard and metric and make sure you get duplicates in all your sizes with deep sockets. That's important, get deep sockets. The first time you need a deep socket and you don't have one, you're gonna be kicking yourself. It's gonna be something where you can't get at it from the side with a wrench and you can't finish your project. You're gonna have something all taken apart and you can't finish your project because you don't have deep sockets. I ran into that within probably six months of buying my first socket set at the age of 16 and I was really kicking myself. And I bought a much larger set and I still have that same set today that I first bought when I was 16. I've since stepped it up and I bought even bigger sets, got the, got the half inch drive. But I mean, good, nice starter set. It's gonna run you about 50 bucks or so. And it's something you'll probably have for the rest of your life. And it's nice to just have it all in one spot, not missing any pieces, not some broken hand-me-down rusty set from somebody else. Get a decent socket set. You'll be glad you did. Next, what do we got here? I'm looking at, I got my tools all laid out here. Okay, next, screwdriver. You don't need a full screwdriver set. I mean, you can buy them, but I, no need. Get yourself an all-in-one screwdriver. My personal favorite is the Mega Pro 
15 in one screwdriver. I like this one because I, and I would never have bought one of these things. I always used to think they're just kind of gimmicky. Like, you know, give me, give me a full set of screwdrivers. But I got one of these as a giveaway at a learning seminar I attended once and stuck it in my tool belt. And I've grown so attached to this. Can't, this is another one of my can't live without tools. It's, it's where you take the handle. I'm just fidgeting with it right now. You take the handle, you pull it out, and you have, I think, uh, like seven, diff what is it? Seven, yeah, seven double-ended fasteners inside here to make 14, and then 15 is a quarter, dri quarter inch driver on the end here. And it's all the most common sizes of all the stuff I listed before. Phillips, slotted, Torx, and square drive. You have all those right in the handle. It feels good in your hand. Love this particular screwdriver. Again, that was the, uh, the Mega Pro 15 in one. Next, utility knives. Get yourself a handful of utility knives. I mean, get, get at least one. I like having utility knives all over. I've got them in my office and the garage and the kitchen and the utility room and the basement and probably just about every bedroom for some reason. I mean, they are scattered throughout my house. We use them for stuff all the time, but my, I, I only have one of these utility knives and it, it's a good one. This one's made by Milwaukee. It's the Milwaukee Fastback utility knife. And let me just sell this for a second because it's awesome. You just, you press a button right here and it lets you flick the knife open. It's got super easy blade change. You just push a button on this side and you can change your blades quickly and easily. I can get it back in there. And it's got a huge, clip that goes on your belt really easily. And then it's even got this little cutter built in here. If you're cutting twine, you don't need to take your, you don't need to actually open your knife. So lots of cool features. Oh, and then finally, it just feels good in your hand. It's ergonomically shaped. Like your finger just goes right in there. It's the most comfortable knife I've ever used too. So love this thing. If I were gonna buy another one, I would buy the one that had a little bit of storage in the handle where you can store replacement blades too. I'm big on replacing my blades often. Anytime my blade is a little bit dull, pop in a new one. I buy blades by the hundred. I do not work with dull blades. So get yourself some extra blades too. So get some utility knives. Next, you could get a full set of adjustable wrenches, which I used to call a crescent wrench. I'm, whoops. I need that, sorry. This is, a, this is what I used to call a crescent wrench. It, the technical name, the, the correct name for this is an adjustable wrench. And that's because Crescent is a brand name. They make a bunch of stuff other than adjustable wrenches. I mean, they, they do make adjustable wrenches. This here, this is a Crescent wrench. <laughs> it's an adjustable wrench made by Crescent, but uh, Crescent also makes other wrenches. I mean, look at this one. If you're old school, I don't know if I'm old school. I kind of feel like I'm old school. If you're old school, you might call this a channel lock pliers. That's what I always learned it was called growing up because it's got all these channels here. But this is actually made by Crescent. So we can't call this a channel lock. And, and this, this thing that I'm holding up, what I've always called the Crescent wrench, <laughs> it's... This is actually made by channel lock. So it gets really confusing. So there's no such thing as a channel lock wrench. There's no such thing as a crescent wrench. Don't call them that, it's confusing. This is an adjustable wrench. Get yourself a good adjustable wrench. You know, you could get a whole kit. You can get small, medium, and large. I've got that up on my wall, but I'll tell you what. Then I found this one. This is, uh, this is called, this is the name of it. It's the wide ass wrench and Channel lock makes it and it's got this huge jaw. It's like an oversized jaw. It opens to about one and three quarter inches and it's it's a narrower head than your typical adjustable wrench. So you can get into a lot of places. I love this one. This is the uh, 8WCB 8 inch wrench. It's got a shorter handle. So you know, if you've got some really heavy serious cranking, you're not going to get quite the leverage with this one but I have never had a problem with it. I've never had something that I couldn't crank hard enough on with this where I had to go get a different wrench. So get yourself an adjustable wrench. It'll, uh, it'll get a lot of jobs done. Get 
a long nose pliers. If you're gonna get one set of pliers, get a long nose pliers. Now you could get some cheap little thing like this. Uh, you know, this is like a, a 99 cent pliers. It, it gets the job done, it's all you need. It's got a, a snipper built in right down at the bottom. End up using that for cutting a lot of stuff. I, I use my long nose pliers a lot. If you wanna step it up and you wanna get a fancier one, of course, you'd go with the Milwaukee. Milwaukee makes a really nice long nose pliers. It's got this little lock here, and then it's spring-loaded. It just, it feels good. It's smooth operation. It's got a wire cutters built into it. It's got a cable cutters built in. Got some other stuff for bending wires and, and cutting uh, small bolts off. Lots of nice features in this, but you know, of course this is a lot more expensive than my 99 cent set of uh, players. Get yourself a hammer for hitting things. We're not gonna get into hammers. I have, I have no big preference when it comes to hammers. Next, get yourself a jeweler's screwdriver set. The first time you need to do something on a small screw, taking something apart, you're gonna wish you had it. I, I find myself using this all the time. This is I, I don't know. I don't even know if you can buy the same kit anymore. I probably got it for $2.99 on an end cap at Home Depot on clearance or something. But I bought a couple of them and I, I keep one in my office, keep one in the kitchen, I keep, keep one in the garage. I've got them all over and I like having them. So get yourself a set of jewelers, screwdrivers. And then finally, a ladder. I'm not gonna demonstrate the ladder, but I'd say get a little giant ladder. That's my favorite for sure. I've been using a little giant ladder since the first day I ever did a home inspection. My dad trained me on how to use little giant ladders when I first got into home inspections. That's what he was using forever. They're fantastic ladders. They're durable. They'll get you on just about any roof. They'll get you anywhere you need to go. And they've got a lifetime warranty. And they're not expensive. The only complaint I've heard about little giant ladders is that they're kind of heavy and they're difficult to open and close. And I say, you know what, just practice a little bit. You'll get really good at it. I mean, if my 11 year old daughter can pop them open and closed with very little effort, you can too. You don't believe me here. I got a video of her doing it. Let's check it out. All right, Lou, let her rip. Yeah, isn't she great? Good job, Lucy. Way to pull it off. Okay, that's a little giant ladder. They sell them at Costco, that, that exact one that we were just showing. I bought that at Costco. It was on sale for $139, and they regularly go on sale for that same price at Costco. That's been going on for many years. They constantly put those on sale. So go there. That's where you should get your ladder. That's probably all you will ever need. Okay, that concludes my tool list. If you have any other suggestions for me, stuff that I missed, like, hey, there's another must-have tool for every homeowner, leave a comment in the chat. Okay, again, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.